Greetings to everyone watching this. Uh, it is the I Don't Know TV show, and I'm your host, Dorset Price. It is Saturday, April the 3rd of the year 2016, and I am joined by a very special guest. I know most of you viewers out there, uh, this is our first uh, all-audio interview, but um, it's a very effective mode of transportation of this information at the moment. And we're joined by our very special guest, uh, Mr. Mark Sargent. Um, and he asked the question, are we inside a Truman Show enclosed world, thousands of miles wide? This is part of a series of videos that shows not only is it possible, but likely. And that is talking about his uh, YouTube documentary series entitled Flat Earth Clue Clues. And Mark's bio, uh, let, me, let me read you guys his bio um, real quick. Growing up on South Whidbey Island, Washington, Mark Sargent started his career playing computer games professionally in Boulder, Colorado. From there, he spent the next 20 years training people in proprietary software. In 2014, he looked into what is no doubt the most ridiculous conspiracy ever called Flat Earth Theory. And through extensive research, discovered that it wasn't so laughable after all. Early in 2015, he released a series of YouTube videos titled Flat Earth Clues, which delves into the possibility of our human civilization actually being inside a Truman Show-like enclosed system and how it's been hidden from the public since 1956. So, Mark, how are you doing today, brother? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Man, I'm doing awesome, man. Thank you so much for your time and your energy, man, and helping us through these technical difficulties we experienced at the beginning of our show. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, you are the man. Oh, no, no. I've just done a lot of tech support in my life, so no no worries at all. And thank you very much for having me. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Great, man. We're really looking forward to it. Uh, me and the producer, uh, Chioki Jelani Clan, we're looking forward to this interview. And uh, you have cre created quite a buzz. <laughs> Um, in the circle of people that, that, that we're involved in, man, this, this flat earth thing, you know, a lot of people, they, uh, they scoff and they laugh when we, when we even mention, uh, you know, we're not living on a ball, right? Yeah. 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 Everybody does though. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where it, people keep forgetting that, uh, I, everybody in the flat, I should say 99% of the people that start off in the flat earth movement, uh, they they begin as a debunker. They try to shut it down, and you don't see that with any other conspiracy. You know the the numbers like that, where it's such a low percentage of people that buy it, and you've got to wonder why. And it's because of the conditioning. I I worked on this thing for nine months, and really thought I could I could because I, I consider myself a really good creative problem solver, and thought I could get around it and, and prove the globe. And then finally, you know, the beginning of last year, I changed my mind and said nope. Nope, I, I'm going the other way, and that is, uh, you know, somebody show me how the flat model is wrong. Somebody show me how there's 100% proof of the globe. And, you know, it's been, you know, that was the beginning of 2015, and we're now in the, you know, in the, the middle of, well, beginning of 2016. And it hasn't, you know, we're, we're in the same place where the, the globe just keeps getting weaker and weaker. Uh, you know, if you treat it like a court case, uh, you know, we're, we've created so much reasonable doubt in the globe which is why the flat earth movement just continues to resonate. Exactly. See, so, cause when I was a child, man, I always, I always wondered about that because the, the whole concept of gravity yeah. uh, to me, that meant like the earth was trying to implode upon itself. And I'm like, how is that even possible? You know, implode into what, you know, and you hear, hear about sinkholes and this type of stuff. And so, you know, they're constantly feeding us garbage about what's really going on. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's a lot of anomalies that, you know, or, or the fact that it'd be the middle of the day, and uh, you know, I'd be outside playing, and I would see the moon yeah. <laughs> in the sky, yeah. and I, and it didn't make any sense. And um, and I also encountered the you know before the whole it, it never just clicked in my mind. But I'm like, okay, so why aren't there any flights going through the southern hemisphere? You know, yeah. why it doesn't make sense? You know, because I had a lot of foreign friends growing up. So, from what are some of the basic um, 
because I want to I want to steer people towards flat earth clues because I mean you you, you laid it down so eloquently there. I think I've watched it twice, man. It's, <laughs> it's great. So uh, well, most I, most I, people do watch it twice uh, just because they don't believe it the first time. It it hits them and it's like like a speeding car that went by. It's like wait, what did I just watch? There's no way. And uh, but I'm sorry. Uh, if you know nowadays in beforehand i would say that that flat earth clues was was probably the best introductory video series to to look into the flat earth which was you know i i did break it down into uh the the whole flat earth theory i broke it down into an introduction and 12 clues you know covering a whole bunch of things and they were all were less than 15 minutes long and of course you know people compiled them into a, a movie but as of you know the last three weeks a really neat video has come out uh, by a guy named marty Leeds, and he made something called uh, flat earth the ultimate litmus test uh, you know check that out you know I, I recommend that that's that's also a great introductory it's not it's not super basic but it gives a really good really well-rounded intro into the flat earth theory from uh, not necessarily both sides but from an objective point of view and uh, it's yeah, that one's really good too excellent marty leads in case you guys out there uh i think you should get your pen and paper out because i do uh i have my <laughs> pen and paper ready and marty leads and, it's, yes. and, and that one's that one's easy to find just so you know because youtube will when you go into youtube and you type in flat earth up at the top and don't put any filters it's kind of like a like a record list you know like top 10 top 20 so it's not just it doesn't take into it takes into account the total number of hits of course but it also takes into account trending and if uh if a uh, a particular video is getting a lot of hits rapidly, but but the hit, hit count isn't quite you know up up in the stellar stratosphere. It'll still bump it up towards the top. And Marty's has been up there now for the last couple of weeks, right up at the very top, which is really really great. He's out of uh, Canada, I believe. In flat Earth. Oh, perfect. But I didn't lose much. The um, if you type in flat Earth, it'll what it'll do is it'll treat it like a record and uh, like a record rating system, and so. Uh, videos that are trending, if they're getting a lot of hits every hour or, or a certain number of hits every hour, it'll bump it up towards the top. So Marty out of Canada is getting a, is getting a pretty big number of hits right now. Still there? Hello? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm trying to go to a I'm going to a location closer to the router. Make sure I don't get dropped again. Oh no worries. <laughs> oh oh you you were you were you were going wireless. That could have been why why it happened. Excellent. Yeah, we're on the yeah, laptop. No, no so, worries. No worries. So, but anyway, yeah, Marty's doing some great work. There's a lot of, again, uh, you know, my yes, I have some great introductory material. As a matter of fact, I went out of my uh, way to make sure to that there was very little math, if any, in the entire series that I did. Yeah, I threw out a few numbers here and there, but I don't ask people to do their own calculations. Uh, but when you go into YouTube and you just type in flat Earth, there is oh God, thousands of hours now. Of, of material, uh, some of it very, very good by a lot of different people. So, again, you, you want to start out with my clues, great, but if you don't, you, you, you're not going to go wrong no matter which way you go. Excellent, excellent. I love it, man. Yeah, that's what I liked about it, man, because it, it's not a lot of thinking required. A lot of this is, is common sense. Yeah. I mean, so, so for, let's just say you're in a conversation, you're walking up on someone and, and this topic comes up, someone they're so adamant about the topic and it involves uh, a round earth. And and you want to just get them, instead of just saying, if you want to engage a conversation with someone, what is some of the most basic, you know, I common would, sense things people don't think about? You well, know? the first thing I would do is I would, I, <laughs> First thing, if you can, if you can avoid talking to them about it, then avoid talking to them about it because people will react to you. unless you're ready to to catch some some hell. You're gonna, you know, you're gonna because everyone resist, reacts the same way, and, and I'm not trying to dissuade people. Believe me, I'm, I'm a huge believer in the flat Earth movement. But you've got to size up who you're going up against, and if that means you have to talk to him like a, there's a, a taxi driver over in London, and what he does is he treats it kind of like, wow, did you hear about this crazy thing the other day? That's nuts, right? You know, kind of like. Like trying to go at them sideways and say that I, you know, these these flat earthers, they're they're insane, you know. Trying, right. but and then if the person you're talking to says, yeah, they're absolutely nuts, I'd never give it a time of day. Well, then you kind of can gauge where what you're going up against. But 
and people what people forget is once they get into the flat earth they f seem to forget how long it took them to, to come around so let's say you're a fairly open-minded person and it took you maybe a week two weeks or maybe even just a few days to get on board with the flat earth theory you've got all of a sudden when you when you get that aha moment when it snaps inside your head you want to go tell people and i i've and you know you're told this at some point and you believed it uh and and you're going to answer one of two ways and it's fascinating listening to people because i go do you know you're on a globe because you saw the globe in your classroom when you were six years old and it followed you through school until you graduated or didn't graduate or did you see the one picture that nasa the one picture <laughs> the one picture that nasa showed you in 1972 and they kept reprinting it in the textbooks every year after that until uh 2015 and i don't know if they're going to use if they're going to update the pictures at all and by that i mean if you guys if anyone's listening to this and think i'm kidding all you have to do is go on google or whatever search engine you use i'm not endorsing any and i say and say uh flat earth blue marble picture in fact if you want you can type in flat earth blue marble 43 years and you'll see something that's very very interesting and that was last year in fact last summer 2015 uh, the uh, White House and NASA were tweeting uh, about the very first full-blown Earth, you know, full disc shot in sunlight, Earth shot that uh, they had done in 43 years. And they were pretty open about it, meaning they had not taken a second picture, a full picture of the Earth from space in 43 years, basically since the, the, the Apollo 17 mission. And that for me raised so many flags because that that's that was one of the reasons that I was getting to, that I went down the road and tried to prove that it was uh, that not necessarily it was flat but it certainly wasn't a globe because I couldn't find all the globe evidence that everyone assumes is there because if there are thousands of satellites in space and if Apollo 8 through 17 not to mention the space shuttle missions and Soyuz and the International Space Station if all those things are up there there should be Un, basically an uncountable number of pictures not to mention full blown videos of the earth rotating on its axis and they just aren't there and i looked for months and i was going this can't be this can't be right this, this can't be possible but then it all of a sudden dawned on me that all the things that we assume were there were just that they were just assumptions we're told that they're there uh, in fact, everything keeps ro going back to the same group, and I know it sounds too simple an answer or a question to ask, which is, can you prove that you're on a globe without using the word NASA? And then exactly. people say, well, you know, there's other space agencies, the European agency, Japanese, you know, the, the Chinese, the Russians, the India, East India, all these other groups. I'm going, no, 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 NASA was the one that started this whole thing, and they're the gatekeepers. All other space agencies blueprint from them. And so if NASA's faking it, they're all going to fake it. Don't don't think that and, and people say, well, it's such a giant conspiracy. It's a massive conspiracy. And you couldn't cover up something like this. I'm going, well, you could if you only had to tell the telemetry guys, you know, if everybody else, the wrench turners and the people that build everything on the ground, you don't have to tell them anything. The media, uh, the media, well, even the media, you don't have to tell. I mean, yeah, you have to tell some uh, at the highest levels. But most you don't. Anyway, I'm sorry. I go off on rants. I, I've been I've been doing this. I, I'm loving your rant. I'm sure our Thanks. viewers will too. <laughs> <laughs> so what 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 else? Did, I'm sorry. Where what, I, I forgot what the initial question was. Oh oh, how to just address it to people? Yeah, I I go up to them and say, how do you know where you? How do you know? How do you know that you're on a globe? Don't tell me what somebody told you. How do you know? Because it always comes back to that. It's is you were told this. You don't know this. You, were exactly. told, you know what the boiling temperature of water is because you can put a temperature in a, a thing of water that you put on the stove. You, that's something you can test. When it comes to you being on the globe, you can't test that because nobody owns a spaceship. And I mean nobody owns a spaceship. Billionaires don't own spaceships. Now you could say, well, oh, Virgin Galactic and SpaceX, they own stuff. Yeah, but they don't go anywhere because eventually, sooner or later, the, if, if they keep being persistent, the government has to let whoever it is at the top level in on it. And those guys aren't going anywhere. The mission, mission to Mars has a, it did not bother anybody. I mean, yeah, it didn't bother anybody in the 80s, but it really should bother people now. It's like, does it bother anybody that nobody has even attempted a moon mission since 1972 from any country whatsoever? 
uh, the, we, we should have moon houses. There should be condos on the moon by now. And there's <laughs> not, there's nothing. Um, there's, there's so much, so many things in fact that aren't there. Like, like for example, I'll just rattle off a few. Um, one, a couple were from my clues and that, and, and I didn't discover it. It's a hive mind thing. Um, Max Malone was the first one that said, uh, isn't it interesting that there isn't a single astronaut shot outside not interior but an exterior shot where an astronaut doesn't even pan the camera 180 degrees or further um <laughs> isn't it interesting that we don't have any any video uh, that the nasa will will admit to of the earth rot rotating on its axis from space isn't it interesting that we don't have any camera footage of a space vehicle of any kind anywhere uh at leaving Earth's orbit or returning to Earth's orbit, even though like the the JAXA probe from the from 2000 what was it 2004 or 2005 or seven, where the Japanese supposedly sent an HD camera you know satellite around the moon and it came back, but the the footage cuts out you know doesn't even <laughs> it turns on <laughs> only when they're right at the moon and leaves as they're as they're still hovering over the moon. This is HD footage. They should have thousands of hours on this thing. Um, and not only that, but there's no, there's not even footage, for example, it's simple stuff. Like, you know, we've got an international space station up there. People have been doing spacewalks forever. There isn't even footage of a single astronaut in an airlock with the door opening. You know, you think, you know, get put, attach a GoPro camera to the guy's thing and, and open up the door, then walk out. We don't even have that. There's nothing up there. We, the, it's all subliminal. We've all bought into it because all the science... And I, give me, don't get me wrong. I love science fiction movies. All the science fiction movies we've, we've, we've watched over the years, over the last 50, 60 years, we've, those movies have filled in the blanks for us. They say, oh, yeah, there's all sorts of stuff. And I go, I go yeah, which is why I did the first clue. And people give me crap because they say, oh, it's a weak clue. And I go, really? I go, we make movies about absolutely everything, right? You, 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 we've all sat through terrible movies, right? We paid money for terrible Ooh. movies to watch, right? But there That's isn't a true. single movie, not a single one about the moon missions. Not one. When Hollywood makes movies about it, if there's a nickel to be made in Hollywood, they will make a movie about it. There isn't a single moon movie. Not one. The closest they ever did was 1983, The Right Stuff, which which would have won Best Picture of the Year, except Gandhi won it over them, and <laughs> and that movie didn't even didn't even break out of Earth orbit, and that was three out three out plus hours long, and then uh, Apollo thirteen, which was twelve years later in nineteen ninety five, and that one was shot completely in a capsule, you know the whole thing, and nobody nobody landed on the moon. There's never been a moon movie. Uh, you know, about any anyone landing on the moon. How is that even possible? Greatest achievement of mankind. Uh, you know, it's, Americans did it six times. Nobody else did it. The Americans aren't going to make a movie about it. Bunch of crap. Don't, don't tell me they're not going to make a movie on that. And there's a reason why. And that's because you can't, you can't put into people's heads how easy it is to fake something like that. Because if you make a moon movie and it's really close to what you showed on television then all of a sudden the lines get blurred and people are going to start scratching their heads, especially the people that actually made the movie, and go, hey, wait a minute. Why, what am I looking at here? Because uh, they, you, you won't be able to tell between the real thing and what, you know, what's real and what's fake. You're not going to give people the excuse. Exactly. And what I'm seeing on my end, it's, it's slowly breaking my world down brick by brick, and I'm forced to take those bricks and try to build something else, just like you mentioned SpaceX. And you know, I man, I'm a big fan, you know, of what Elon Musk does, and you know, with the with the Tesla vehicles. And so then that makes me wonder, you know, what is what is going on, you know, for if if everything that this guy, you know, he's supposed to be one of the good guys, you know, it, it's just endless, you yeah. know. And yeah. and you know, you're probably the Illuminati as well, you know. Oh, now of course, I'm, yeah. I'm Illuminati confirmed now, you know, because yeah. yeah. we're talking about flat Earth. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, you know, the, you don't have to have the, the, this one is different from the others, you know, because some people say, well, it's such a massive conspiracy, you'd have to have everybody in on it. I go, no, no, you wouldn't. This isn't like the Manhattan Project, right. where you're developing atomic weapons, and you have several hundred thousand Americans that are working at factories uh, in Tennessee and uh, Washington State, where, where, they're, where they're building, you know, nuclear material. And... What this is, what makes this different is you don't have the lesser the people know, the better, because it's such a huge secret that you don't, and it blows people's minds. 
it, that's this, powerful, man. It's a crazy dynamic, man. That's powerful how you're putting this out there because, I mean, I'm just getting into it, so I'm seeing the backlash. So yeah. it's very accurate what you're saying, man. People get really worked up. Again, it's I, I don't want to steal too much from The Matrix uh, or The Truman Show, but The, the Matrix uh, comparison is pretty accurate, and that was when Neo was first told, you know, after all that other crap of running from the agents and getting, you know, put in that spaceship, when when he sat down and he's plugged into the Matrix for the first time and they show him, they say, look, just so you know, the world you were living in, it was not even close to what it really was. He freaked out. You know, he's like, you know, he just started swinging. And even when they pulled him out, he was still swinging and he passed out. And he, it took him a while to get his head around it. And that's because it's a, um, it's a world changer. It's a game changer. You don't... It's, it's one thing to be told that your government's lying to you. It's another thing when you're being told that they're hiding the, the, the very world itself from you. And uh, it's, so people react very, very differently. And, and yeah, there's a lot of anger, a lot of frustration. Uh, you, you see the five stages of acceptance getting kicked in almost immediately where, where people will, first off, you know, first reaction is always denial, um, followed by anger. Uh, and then you have bargaining, depression, and and um, and finally acceptance, and that's what we run into all the time. I anyone has any doubts, look at any flat Earth video and go into the comments section. I've never seen a topic. I don't. I don't care if it's conspiracy or not. You, you forget about JFK and Pearl Harbor. I mean, we you, you talk about like church versus state, or stem cells, or abortion, exactly. or you you take your pick. Nothing gets people fired up like this does where they just lash out at you. I mean, the name calling and the, um, the profanity and, and um, just the just the general insults. I, you know, I try to tell people that, and I, I tell them ahead of time, even before they debate me, I'll go, just so you know, in advance, I go, uh, you know, yelling, that's not a rebuttal. Name calling isn't a rebuttal. Profanity isn't a rebuttal. None of these things are going to help your argument at all. It just shows you how well you've been conditioned. Uh, because again, you know, it's, it is... It, if you, it sounds too simple, but if you have the globe in your classroom and you have it from age six until let's say age 18, that's, that's it. That's all that's needed. Because when you come out, that's the reaction you're going to have. And you, you're going to say, people say, well, flat earth. And, and in fact, I can say any other term. What's weird is I can say any other, it's keyed off of those two words. If I say enclosed world or Truman show or enclosed earth or snow globe, just take your pick. I can, I can talk about those things for 20, 30 minutes. The second I say flat earth, I see people's, people's eyes just glaze over and they look at me and they go, you're an idiot. And they, they don't even know why they're saying it. They just, you're, you're a moron. And it's, just, it's, it's like, really? Why? And, and, but they can't under, they don't know why they're saying it. They just are. They, uh, they just get really, really upset. And I, I don't blame them. I don't blame them. And, and I can't get mad at them because I was in the same boat as them. And, and if you think I'm kidding about this reaction, um, there's two things I like to tell people. One is, the because i'm really stubborn when it comes to this stuff and when i finally because i looked at just about every other conspiracy when i finally clicked on my first flat earth video i actually got flushed from embarrassment i was wow. going i was going well i've gone i can't believe i'm actually clicking on this i must be super bored if i you know i this is i this is the dumbest thing ever but the other thing is is that conspiracy people and there was a, a one of the conspiracy guys he hates me now but uh his name was his handle is called star gods and he said, you know what's interesting about Flat Earth is it tests how open-minded you really are. Because I've, I've talked to people that believe, I mean, firmly believe that uh, all the members of the royal family are lizards. You know, absolutely. <laughs> and, and Bigfoot and Loch Ness Monster and all this stuff. You know, they, they could literally be wearing a full-blown alien costume, you know, at an alien convention. And I could be there and I could say, by the way, the earth is flat and they will laugh at me and just walk away. And it's like, right. how is that possible that every other conspiracy you can, you know, you can absorb, but not this one. It's, it's fascinating to me, but it's, for me, it's, it's the only conspiracy now. It, right. I mean, and our producer, he started, he's begun to say, um, the not round earth. Cause I get the same thing. We were just, we were just speaking before the interview and, uh, he, he told me that too. He's, he's starting to say, uh, not round earth. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah not, it, it, not round. Yeah. It, yeah. Because in fact, I had a, um, a couple of big shows that, that, uh, uh, well, I'll tell you the, the Alex Jones show, for example, they were toying with the idea of doing the show, but they couldn't, they want to know if it could be done without actually using the term, uh, without using flat earth. 
And it's like, man, it's tough. It's tough because sooner or later, someone's going to pin you down on it. And they're going to say, wait, 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 are you talking about... In fact, I did a debate uh, with on Truth Frequency Radio not that long ago with Stanton Friedman, you know, considered to be the, the greatest UFO researcher of all time, right? right? You know, spaceships, aliens, the whole nine yards. And we're about 10 minutes into this thing. And I'm debating my points, blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden, he stops me. And he's going, wait, wait, wait. Are we talking about this like it's real? Like, like <laughs> well, I, you know, he thought it was like a figure of speech. It's like, wait, no, we're, 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 flat Earth, that's like a general, con that's like an ethereal concept. You're not actually talking that the Earth is, is, you know, shaped like a snow globe where it's flat on the bottom and it's covered with a dome like a biblical firmament. I go, yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. And he's going, and, and all of a sudden he stops and his mind is just reeling. And he's going, wait. That can't be right. And, and and because of so many things in his life, he's going, look, he goes, I had an astronaut write the foreword for my last book. I go, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I go, and you see the fear yeah. in their eyes. And then they just, it, it's like they glaze over, man. And the fact, I mean, it's an amazing exercise for me, man. I'm learning so much just for the fact that they won't even entertain it. They don't even want to engage in a conversation. Yeah. And you hear the you, the pitch in their voice change, and they start sweating. And yeah. and it's like, you know, for them to have to admit that maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we were duped. Maybe, because, you know, here at the I Don't Know show, man, we, we're, we go from a scientific method. And the fact, you know, anyone that knows, uh, the first step of wisdom is to say, you know, hey, I don't know. So then you're open, you know, to, to fill that glass up with goodness, you sure. know, instead of, you know, saying your glass is already full. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it, it's, it's pretty peculiar. Peculiar, man. It's an interesting thing. It is it's becoming fun. I, I went through the, the stress phase and you know, you know, out of touch phase, and I went through the, you know, I just want to pull the covers over my head in the morning. I don't even want to get out of bed phase. Like, okay, everything yeah. around me is crumbling. I'm chicken little now, you know. So yeah. Yeah. It, 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 and so it's 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 pretty interesting to see, man, and, and to listen to you because you're further along the path of this. <laughs> Thing, man well not as long as long as not as long as you might think i mean i've i'm one of the uh earlier ones i mean yeah there were guys that did it before me like you know eric debay was in uh, a little bit before me and matt boylan uh and um other some other guys but i it's so it everything you you learn so much so quickly and you absorb so much information that now i it's it's hard for me to even grab the speed of which this thing has been going recently where you know, it's been tra it's being translated uh, in fact there was a, a chinese guy that was doing a video the other day all in chinese uh wearing american flatter t-shirts uh it's the it's the we'll give, it'll give you a perfect example when you typed in flat earth into youtube uh, you know even at the beginning of 2015 you might have gotten i don't know 40,000 50,000 whatever it was hits not a lot and if you type in the same thing now, today, you get about 6 million. And that's an amazing increase. You know, that's, that's 10,000 plus percentage increase in, in the last 14 months. It's nutty, the, the speed, and, and because it's resonating. It's not something, again, it's not something that can be shot down. Uh, not even close to it, because uh, the, it, we've had... Scientists, we, we've solicited just about every scientist you can think of, and they won't touch it with a 10-foot pole, with the exception of, uh, you know, that, that thing that happened at the beginning of this year where uh, rapper B.O.B. came out and made a Flat Earth song called Flatline, and he uses uh, a Neil deGrasse Tyson, the world's most popular physicist, uh, he uses an audio clip from that, and then Neil deGrasse Tyson, instead of ignoring it, he responds in a Twitter battle, and then goes on uh, Comedy Central and does this monologue against B.O.B., you know, talking about, you know, it says the earth isn't effing flat, and, you know, drops the mic and the whole nine yards, very dramatic, and this all happened in a very short amount of time. So, and then Obama just mentions it, what, uh, on the 28th? Uh, just, right. just a few days ago, Obama mentions it again. And that was really, that really caught our, our attention as well, because he hadn't addressed it since the movement really, really started picking up steam. His, the, the, the big one that he talked about on the White House lawn, he did that uh, in the summer of 2014, six months even before the, the Flat Earth Clues came out. And then he mentions it just a couple of days ago, and he didn't have why? Why? It's his last year. year. He he should be playing golf and going on trips. And he's and he's <laughs> why why bring this up? It's it's 
why why does Neil deGrasse Tyson have to bring it up on national television? I mean, not just the BOB thing, but he goes on CNN and Bloomberg, and he's telling people not to talk about flat Earth, and which makes me f- really suspicious because the the one thing you do is look if you don't want to talk about it, then you don't talk about it. You you you, mean, you you talk about it in the back room with the producers. You don't go on television and say you shouldn't be talking about flat Earth. It's like really. <laughs> Right, and that's one of the few things I I never would have put together in my wildest dreams, man. Neil deGrasse Tyson dropping a microphone. That was that was excellent. And how, those of you who haven't seen it, you should check it out. How does that happen? You know, and and you know, even not to not to read it too much, but like Bob, he was on. They ran stories. Every media outlet it reached hundred percent saturation. Bob had his that story in every publication in the United States and England. I think most pretty much anywhere uh, in the Western world, and. He didn't do an interview on it. Why not? I mean, he Time Magazine, NPR, Vanity Fair, uh, MTV, everybody was talking about this thing, and he wouldn't answer the phone. And it, it's like, why? Why, 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 why? There's something There's something else going on here. And it's, uh, something in the oven, man. I yeah. mean, because, why, like you said, why wouldn't they just even ignore it? Because I, I know they ignore so many things on a daily basis, but that they chose to give this, you know, any energy whatsoever, you know, it makes their antennas go up. Because, yeah. I mean, and, and to us, it's feeling like it's, it's like we're remembering something. It isn't so much like we're learning something. There you go. Like, you know, that's what yeah. it feels like to me and the people in my circle that do, you know, accept this. Yeah. And, and it's it's good. It's a good feeling because it starts to show us that okay. Well, if this is that way, then what else is this way? You yeah. know, what what else do I need to reevaluate in my life, man? Everything that they've told us, we gotta question it all, man. What the bleep do we know? Yeah, yeah. It it you're absolutely right, and that was it. It's opened up because if you can get your head around this, you are open to just about anything because every, everything comes back on the table. People can. They can bury a lot of secrets. You can say, I'm not going to get into too many of them, but people will, you know, there's a lot of conspiracies out there that could be buried in the desert or could be hidden. And people are like, you know what, I've got, you know, I've still got to do all my stuff and it's not going to affect my daily life. But once this thing comes out, everything else comes back on the table, uh, especially in the terms of science and government, which is why... Again, it feels like there's something more to it, but you're, but you're absolutely right, and that is we're relearning this. This is what everybody knew for thousands of years. It was only after the last, in the last 500 years, that it turned into a globe. You know that it was that it, but you know, 500 years ago was very, very different. Now, it, you know it, it, it because you, when you when it changed from a flat world to the globe model 500 years ago, it was slow. You had to roll it out very, very slow. I mean, people barely had newspapers, right? But right. now. If it goes back to flat, it happens instantly. I mean, within hours, to where anyone, you know, any co- any country that's tied to social media in any capacity, this thing all of a sudden becomes instant. It, it's, it just, it's just a question of who doesn't have their, you know, the people that, that won't know about it right away just don't have their phones turned on. Right. Uh, that's the extent of it. I mean, yeah, you'll have a tribe in the middle of the, the Amazon jungle or somewhere out in Africa where they, they don't, they won't know right away and they probably won't be surprised. It's like, what it was round to begin with we always thought it was flat so it's right yeah. and uh i mean i'd hate to i hate to be the one to tell you man but you've arrived man you're like the voice of flat earth i mean in, in a year in, in youtube and alternative media right now i mean that's like a decade in, in... <laughs> <laughs> i've it's done and, and thank you for saying that i i try to i try to downplay it as much as i can but uh, i mean i've done well this is my like 73rd 74th interview in the last 14 months uh, there's been a lot of activity on it, and I'm not I'm not going to shy away from it because the the people that like for example uh, my first interviews you, you probably heard of Matt Boylan by now, right? And that was you know people that were calling me for my first interviews they were looking for Matt Boylan, and they were saying look we want to talk to the guy that that said he used to work for NASA as as a photorealistic painter, and Matt wouldn't wouldn't take the calls, and so I said all right, and they go well can you tell us anything? I go yeah I can fill in some blanks for you. And it just got, you know, it, it, it grew from there to where, you know, my book just got, it just came out uh, at the beginning of March, uh, the Flat Earth Clues book. And that was, I didn't even solicit that. That came from a publisher out in London who called me up and, and said, look, we'd, uh, we'd like to print your book, you know, turn your, your clues into a book and, and you don't have to really do anything. You know, just, just send us, you know, a little bio and, and some Q&A stuff and we'll fill in the rest. I go, hey, fantastic. I honestly didn't even know if it was going to happen. And then sure enough, they, I, here I get a box in the mail. It's full of books. 
and they say yeah we're, we're selling it on Amazon I was going really and uh, yeah and here's the audio version and uh, wow yeah so thank you I mean it's been it's been an interesting year but you're absolutely right a lot happens now in a year yeah that and that's powerful man and uh you know just like you turned me on to uh, Miss Patricia Steer with the flat earth and other hot potatoes yeah and uh you know we we are starting to see this 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 thing snowballing man yeah. she's uh, done she's great she's done uh she's doing i think tomorrow her um or not tomorrow's with me um but like on wednesday that like her 84th show and she's done that and she only started in september so how, how does that happen it's it's crazy right. the flat the flat earth network is coming out soon uh, right. uh you know what they say when the students are ready man the teacher will show up nice man. good one good one yeah that's that's what it feels like here too. Sometimes uh, I I don't want to I don't want to do too too much too many things. Perf uh oh, I'm here. Oh no worries. Again, it'll it'll pick up where it left off. I can stitch these together. It take two seconds. Sweet. So um, uh, but yeah yeah it, the the stuff that's happened in the last year uh, has been really accelerated compared to other things that I've seen in the past. To where we've even been, I've even been catching flack from conspiracy people because they're saying it's detracting from what they consider real conspiracies because they, <laughs> because they haven't looked into it. I was going, man, I, you know, not to, not to toot the, the movement's horn, but what do you qualify as a real conspiracy? I mean, are we, are we talking body count or are we talking about number of uh, amount of money spent in the, uh, in the conspiracy itself? Because, Either way, uh, I think that nothing is going to trump this. Uh, I think I think flat Earth is you know people can s talk what they want about you know like like can 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 the flat Earth movement can can you really say that like Sandy Hook would com compare actually taught yeah. what's encoded you know what you know what is what's encrypted in that thing man so wh what are you seeing um I have seen. I've seen two different things when it comes to religion. One, I get emails every single day about people that are saying that this whole concept brings you back to spirituality. And you say, well, how is that possible? It's just flat earth. I go, no, no, no. It's not just flat earth. It's an enclosed world. Meaning, we're talking Old Testament, Genesis 1-6, uh, the firmament that separates the waters above and the waters below. Right. Uh, which is, in fact, uh, uh you give you a perfect example. I love this one, which was Werner von Braun, who was the founder of NASA, the ex-Nazi scientist who the, United, the Americans grabbed and, and helped the space program, right? I'm writing that down for you all listening. Werner von Braun. Werner von Braun. Uh, if you ever want to look up something interesting, look up his headstone. Just ter t type in Werner von Braun's headstone. And you think the father of rocket science. So you ever heard the saying, oh, you don't have to be a rocket scientist? That's the guy they're talking about, uh, Werner Sweet. von Braun. He is the rocket scientist. And on his headstone, which you would think would be this massive structure of him pointing to the sky or the big cement rocket behind him. No, it's this little headstone, which uh, is 1912 to 1977. And it says on there, Psalms 19.1. And I go, that's kind of odd. And I had to look it up. And I figure, what the heck, Psalm, why, why is this guy putting Psalms 19.1 on his headstone? And Psalms 19.1 says, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Why, why is the father of rocket scientists talking about a giant structure, a dome-like structure that that covers our world? Uh, it is some, why, why would he say that? Why is he t saying this from beyond the grave? It's because he knew. And he, of course, he would have to know. Uh, but but this whole structure, if it is built, if we are underneath some sort of dome, like the Truman Show, that means it was created. If it was created, there was a creator. And if there's a creator... It's really tough to be an atheist nowadays, and that is because every religion at one point, the big five being um, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, and Christianity, they all bought into this at one point or another uh, during the you know several thousand years before the Copernicus principle. And <clears throat> when, this, when this comes about again, you know, when, when, if... If and when, I'm going to say when, though. When mm -hmm. it's revealed that all of a sudden we are part of a giant enclosed structure, we become a part of one giant family. But not only that, the structure itself becomes the handprint of God. It becomes proof of intelligent design. It's and powerful. It is. And, and you think, well, no, science wouldn't hide this from us. I'm going, oh, don't be so sure. Because science and religion aren't exactly the best of friends. Wait, are you telling me the government would lie to me, Mr. Sergeant? Well, no, no, not even just the government, but but science itself has a vested interest in this. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Think of it, if you guys think I'm kidding, uh, think of what I considered to be the, uh, the, 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 the biggest uh, dig into science, which was Raiders of the Lost Ark, you know, the Steven Spielberg movie from the first okay. Indiana Jones movie. And it was all about, you know, the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, you know, who's going to get it? Who, you know, wh who's got the Ark? Wh where's the Ark? Who's going to fight over the Ark? The Germans fight it over, the Americans fight it over. The Americans finally get it at the end, right? And in the last 60 seconds, what do they do with it? They put it in a crate and they put it in a warehouse and no one's ever allowed to see it ever again. And the reason is because the Ark of the Covenant is a religious artifact. It is proof of a higher power. It is proof of intelligent design. And science does not want that, th that thing ever to see the light of day. Uh, same thing with the Holy Grail. Same thing really with the, the true Spear of Destiny. There are no mystical artifacts that are out there. You know, Lo Lord of the Rings, if there was a ring of power, no one's going to get to see that thing because science can't explain it. If science can't explain it, if they don't have a theory that they can come up with math for it, they're going to hide it from you. And this is one of those things, uh, which is... If there is a structure, let's say there's a big wall out there, a big dome. If there's the edge of the dome, they don't want you to see it because people are going to walk up to it and then go, what's it made out of? What's, they're just going to keep throwing out these questions. Who built it? Who built it? Who built it? Science will not be able to answer those. And they will. it would undo so much academia that there would be a lot of scientists out of a job right away. Uh, the, the thing I threw out the clues was, look, if you're an astrophysicist or an astronomer, that's it. You're done. You, you are finished. You're, you're going to crawl into a bottle of scotch and listen to jazz for the rest of your life. You, you, you're never going to do anything because all, everything that you, your education was built on is gone. Um, and the physical sciences are, are, would have to be completely retooled. Uh, geology, hydrology, archaeology, biology, all of them have to be rebuilt. Uh, at least you can salvage those, though. Uh, so science would hide this from you because of uh, this massive religious impact. Not to mention, religion's going to come back, and I'm not going to pick on Christianity, but, but they would spearhead this thing. They're going to come back and say, okay, so we were right, after all, about a lot of things. What else were we right about? You know, or, or more to the point, what was science wrong about? So you were wrong about the Big Bang, because we're living in a big structure. Uh, how about that evolution thing you're working on? Is that real? In fact, is anything you say other than the straight-up physical science and measurements, is, is any of what you say real or just kind of make that up? And if people think I'm kidding, at, look in your science book and look at the cross-section of the Earth, which is, you know, we, if, if you believe in mainstream science, then it's 4,000 miles to the center of the Earth. Well, how do you know that? And, and, and you can see the cross-section. It's like, you know, there's a red layer and an orange and a yellow and a white layer. It's like, oh, so you, you've had probes that have gone down that far. Well, no. Well, it's 4,000 miles of center. How far have you gone down? 2,000? 1,000? 100? 10? You haven't even gone down. The deepest hole ever drilled is 8 miles. That's not even, it's not even, uh, it's barely a fraction of, of 1%. And yet you're going to show me the cross-section of the entire world? How? Oh, we have seismic radar and we can, we're pretty guy, I, we're, you know, we're, we're making these loud thumping noises and we're, we're getting all these readings back. I was going, so you have no idea what's down there. So why in the textbooks are you showing all, everyone, since, since we were kids, why are you showing us what the, what the world looks like? And uh, it's amazing, you know, science will make, they won't make just leaps of faith. What they'll do is they will they will quietly say that, well, we're pretty sure that's what it is. But they'll just put a disclaimer off to the side. You know, we're extrapolating. We're speculating. No, you're just making it up. You don't know. And uh, the masses are going to suck it up. And, and see, even now, I, I could, even though I, I've wrapped my head around it to a certain extent, I can feel myself getting a little weird you know you get weirded out when you when you meditate on it too long you know and and you know the powers that shouldn't be they know that this will bring forth a, a healthy chaos you know yeah. in society yeah. and, and like you said the the whole religion thing we'd have to reevaluate everything yeah you know and and i think i think that in my opinion even if the religion guys did come back you know well we were right about certain stuff that would even that would make them not trust them as well to a certain extent it would yeah there's there's 
I, I'd like to, you know, I try to stay optimistic about the whole thing. And I try to say, well, it, it has the potential to be a new golden age because, yes, it's not like the it isn't the same as it was hundreds of years ago when we had the Dark Ages and the Inquisition where religion was just running ripshot over the countryside and doing the horrible. I mean, they're still doing some, not some great things, but this, I think, would change that. And that is, look, if there is a creator and there is someone that's been looking over your shoulder your entire life and there is a scorecard on your life, are you really going to do the bad things that you used to do or thinking about doing uh, we don't need anyone to tell us that once we see them yeah. <laughs> for ourselves we yeah. don't need anyone to tell us no what we should and shouldn't do no you don't so <laughs> it's i think it has potential to do some really really good things it's it's a very it it's the only conspiracy i've seen that has a optimism built into it uh, you know, I've got a playlist. I've got two playlists on my channel now. People are writing songs about this. I've got I'm pushing like <laughs> nine, nine, 90 tracks. B.O.B. is one of them. But there's like 90 tracks now. All, you know, people that are just making flat earth songs. That's awesome. <laughs> and we That's haven't cool. seen that. You, you see people doing that about 9-11 or JFK. They're not singing songs about JFK. And we haven't seen this since the 60s. And and it's it's way bigger, it's way stronger, and, and it's generating so much positivity, even with a small percentage of the population, and it's just wonderful to see. Awesome, man. Hey, once again, uh, we we appreciate your time, man. Over at the I Don't Know TV show, this is exciting stuff. Well, thank you. I mean, it's it's like we're it's endless. I could talk to you for days, man. I could talk uh, it's for it's days. yeah. You well yeah. People again, people that are looking into this, you're gonna lose a lot of sleep. And that is, you know, because you'll get so amped up and then you'll just watch video after video after video and just just pace yourself because you'll want to, you know, run into the streets and start telling people it's like, no, 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 don't do that. Just just keep it, you know, keep it, you know, low key. And eventually this thing will come out naturally one way or the other. This thing's coming out. Right, because I've got many a, a message, personal and public, man. They're like, "Hey, I want some of whatever you're smoking, man," because you, you got <laughs> you got to be on it, bro. <laughs> yeah, I know stuff. exactly what you mean. Hey, well, I mean, you've been very thorough. We take you, we thank you for your time, man. This is this is so it's fun, you yeah. know. Yeah, find something that's fun again, man. Yeah, I agree. Again, yeah, how many how many conspiracies are fun where you can actually people get excited about it? It's the right. only one I've ever heard of. Right. Yeah. All right, man. Well, that's good stuff. I, I know that uh, you're a very busy man, and this is our first of many future interviews and, uh, you know, interactions. And uh, like I said, we're down here in Houston, so I will be going to that mixer that you uh, alerted me to. Oh, yeah, the uh, Patricia Steer mixer. That's fantastic. Right. So anybody down in the Houston area here, because we should have this uh, We should have this up uh, tonight or so. Okay. Yeah, we'll have this up. And um so I guess you can, once we're finished with it, I guess if you if you want a copy of the, uh, you know whatever we do on the edit. Oh yeah. Or not, yeah, we'll we'll get it to you, man. Cause we're hey we're not you know we we're pretty raw over here. We just do what we got to do. So I don't know how he's gonna how Chioke is going to edit all of this in and out or you know, but he's real good at what he does. So um, yeah, man, all all the viewers and whatnot, we have a a, a powerful thing going. We've we've just been. Um, blessed with the presence of Mark Sargent. So you guys, you do your due diligence and, you know, do your research. Don't take our word for it. Don't believe anything. Go off what you know. Go off what makes sense. Follow your intuition. Follow your heart, your spirit, or, or whatever you want to call it. You know, these are exciting times, so it's time to redefine everything. Get out your boxes, you know, delete your programming. And, hey, listen to guys like Mark Sargent and the people that he's alerted us to as well. So uh, you guys stay tuned to the I Don't Know TV show and be encouraged. Peace. It's all right, man. 